So, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening. Bonjour à tout le monde et bienvenue à la quatrième journée de la troisième assemblée. The session so far, and then yesterday we delve into awareness raising and in knowledge and capacity development gaps. We found the ways uh, to devising bringing financial support for cleanup campaigns through uh, developing partnership with uh, uh, private sectors or embassies and so on. And what we also found the capacity development gaps uh, actually lies not only in the public sector, but also the wider stakeholder uh, needs to be capacitated for the importance of sustainable solid waste management, especially for the youth groups and, and community-based organizations that engaged in cleanup, cleaning activities. So today's theme, I move on to, uh, to uh, innovation towards clean and a circular Africa. And then we have both presentations and panel discussions on this theme. Uh, inviting speakers from and then panelists from the private sector working on solid waste management in cities in Africa. And in here, I would like to also uh, introduce the business matching platform here. Uh, we have very interesting innovative um, technology initiatives lined up uh, in this business matching uh, uh, platform. Let me share my screen. So if you go to, can you see my screen? Can everybody see my screen? Yes, now we can. Good. So here, um, if you go down this ACC African Clean Cities third ACCP assembly, uh, you can go uh, to this uh, third business Assembly business, net, uh, assembly business networking. And then if you click here, and then I'm also going to share the, um, share this into my chat, this chat, the link is here. Ah, I, she already shared. So as you can see that there's a lot of different interesting, um, innovative uh, companies are lined up here showing the uh, solutions for sustainable solid waste management. I think it's very, very interesting for, for interesting opportunities for ACCP members and countries to find solutions for the problems uh, of the solid waste management in your countries and cities. So this is one thing. So please uh, make sure, uh, uh, please make a visit here so that uh, you can find a good uh, solutions for your countries and cities. And let me stop uh, here. Another uh, one thing, uh, one housekeeping rules. Uh, please uh, rename yourself on Zoom with the first name, uh, second, uh, last name and organization so that we can really find out who you are. So many people are coming in as Veronika Sushkova. Uh, because that link was created and it disseminated like that. However, it would be great if you could rename yourself on Zoom by clicking um, the clicking the 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 three dots uh, on your uh, screen uh, camera. And also make sure your microphone is muted unless you're talking. The ACCP is hosted in English, and then there is French simultaneous interpretation available. To access the session in French, use the interpretation channel by clicking the globe uh, in the bottom of the Zoom screen. And use the chat function to introduce yourself and ask questions. And you can also give approval, applaud with icons. So please actively join the session. If you wish to participate in the Q&A section, uh, use the uh, raise a hand function, and then the, there will be a dedicated Q&A session. So uh, please make sure your question also concise so that we can allow as many people as possible to ask questions. And also please actively contribute with your questions and comments to this session so that we can more, uh, we can have more active and interactive uh, communication and interaction here. So thank you very much. Now I would like to move on to start with the presentation uh, by um, Mr. Daniel 
Puffin Holtz, a CEO uh, of Takataka Taka Solutions. He began his career in banking and then redirected his path to tackle waste management in Kenya. And in growing up in Kenya, he related to health and environmental problems caused by poor waste management systems. Today, he will represent his company's achievements in establishing waste collection and recovery system in East Africa. Daniel, are you there? Uh, yes, can yes. you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can and hear you. And my screen is being shared. Yeah, your screen is perfectly shared. Maybe you can, you might want to go in the uh, presentation mode. Uh, yes, one second. Yes. Um, now we're good. We are looking at the presenter's screen. Uh, maybe if you could share another screen to see the... Yes. Yeah. Wait. Uh, um, wait. Uh, sorry for that. No, it's um, okay. Um, wait. How do I ensure presenter screen? Um, maybe um, if you're using two screens, uh, then maybe you can uh, uh, reshare the stop sharing the screen and then a reshare. Then when you share, you can choose the, the the screen number, which screen you would like to show, maybe. Okay. Yeah, sorry, give me one second. Yeah, no worries. So maybe during uh, the time that Daniel is preparing. So Daniel is, uh, is a CEO from Takataka Taka Solutions. And Takataka Taka Solutions is also uh, providing the service for the United Nations in Kenya for the waste collection service. And then Takataka Taka Solutions is also the one of the first uh, company uh, who is introduced that the source separation in, 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 in Kenya. Um. Uh, please participants, please mute yourself uh, uh, when you are not talking. Uh, one second. Maybe I can also share your screen, share my screen for yeah, your if that, presentation. If that is an option, because yeah, I'm you somewhat. Let me do that. Okay. Share. And then I hope it works. Is it working now? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, great. So, Daniel, floor is yours. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks. Then, uh, sorry for the technical glitches. Uh, okay, so thanks now for this. Um, yeah, so I'm Daniel. I'm the CEO and founder of Takataka Taka Solutions. Takataka Taka means waste in Swahili, in case you were wondering. Um, so um, maybe next slide. Um, so uh, now, yeah, so basically just, I mean, I, I know we are all probably experts here and know a lot about waste. Just a quick slide on the problem that, you know, uh, waste management is facing in Kenya, just as a bit of a context. Um, so Nairobi produces around 4,000 tons of waste uh, per day. Um, about only half of that is collected. So the majority remains uncollected, especially waste from low income area. Almost all the waste is either burned or illegally dumped because Kenya doesn't operate a single sanitary landfill. So even the public dump sites are practically dump sites. They're not landfill. Um, Dandora being the biggest one in Kenya where the photo is from on the left. Um, and while we believe as a company that potentially 95% of the waste is reusable, the actual recycling rate is somewhere around 5%. Um, the reason for that is um, basically threefold. So the first issue is that almost every company collecting waste in Kenya takes waste to a dump site. Um, and as a result, waste gets very contaminated and then it becomes very difficult to sort out valuables once they have reached the dump site. So that's the first reason. The second reason, this is compounded by the fact that about 55% of the waste to 60% is organic. Organic, one, um, kind of doesn't really get recycled. There isn't much composting, biogas, or other things going on with organic waste. And then the organic waste also contaminates all the other value streams. So then, 
you know, when you have cardboard or plastics contaminated by organic waste, it becomes a lot harder to kind of recycle them because the cleaning costs are higher. And then the other challenge is, as you can see from the photo, because the dump sites are in such bad states, trucks can sometimes spend hours or day being stuck at the dump site, especially in the rainy season. So as a result, they don't do a lot of trips. So normally each company does one trip per truck per day. And that means then, you know, that collection is not very efficient. And that's why then the services are become too expensive for especially low income areas, which then leads to the low collection rate that I mentioned earlier. So in summary, it's kind of low collection rates because of inefficient dump site, high contamination, dumping leading to little recycling. So that's, that's the um, situation we are facing today. And I think that's not just the case for Kenya, but also is fairly representative to uh, for other countries across the region. So coming to the next slide, please. Um, so just as, so what does Takataka Taka do in short, and we'll come into more details in a bit. So we are an integrated waste management company. Um, so we're active across the whole value chain. So that means one, we collect waste from commercial, residential and industrial clients. We then, instead of taking it to dump sites, we operate sorting sites or also called material recovery facilities where we sort the waste into about 40 fractions. Then the plastics, we operate two recycling plants where we process the plastics into uh, flakes and pellets. Um, and then um, we also do composting of organic waste. Um, and then for other material streams like cardboard, paper, metal, glass, we work with third party recyclers. So if you look at the high level numbers of our operations, we manage about 90 tons of waste a day, 40 fractions. And on average, we are able to uh, recycle between 90 to 95% of the waste that you know we collect. For some of our corporate clients like the UN, the rate is actually higher because the UN doesn't have a lot of diapers and other non-recyclable waste. So there the recycling rate is almost close to 100%. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so this gives a bit of a flow diagram of how uh, we manage waste. So on the left side, you can see is clients. So clients is commercial, industrial and residential waste producers. The waste then goes, as mentioned, to a sorting site or material recovery facilities. There, plastics we recycle in-house, paper, metal, glass, externally, organic waste in-house. We also operate an incinerator for hazardous waste. So that means that the majority of the waste streams we are managing in-house um, and then a minority like paper, metal, glass, we manage through third party providers. The other thing that I should mention is the, um, we also operate uh, something we call buyback centers. So we're buying back waste. So that's at the top left of the diagram from waste pickers. Um, so the reason for that is that basically our recycling plants have excess capacity and can process more waste than we can get from our own collection. So that's why about two years ago, we started putting up buyback centers to buy additional, mostly plastic waste and cardboard waste from dump sites, from waste pickers. So that waste is then collected, purchased, um, bailed, compacted, and then goes back to our recycling plants. So if you then look at the business as a whole, there are basically six business units, collection, sorting, composting, plastic recycling, buying back waste and waste incineration. Um, and at the moment we operate, yeah, three recycling sites, one compost plants, two sorting sites, and one incinerator and about five buyback centers. The majority of our operations are Nairobi, but we do have also a buyback center in Mombasa at the coast of Kenya. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, here just some details, um, a bit more talking a bit more about collection. So I think there's a few other things that we do uh, for customers when it comes to collection. So we don't just collect the waste. Uh, we can also offer data services to clients. So for example, at the UN, as an example, we have a team of on-site sorters that weigh every kilogram of sorted waste. So in that, based on those, um, on the data, we can then generate reports to our customers and tell them, you know, this was your recycling rates. Um, this was CO2 emissions safe from recycling and um, sometimes for customers that are interested, we even go a step further and we also give recommendations on customers changing the kind of packaging or waste that they get. So for example, at Safaricom, which is the largest mobile phone operator in the country, uh, you know, they wanted to know what kind of packaging they should ask their suppliers to change so that they can increase their recycling rate. 
Uh, the other thing we do, uh, which is also the case at the UN, we do source separation initiatives. Uh, they sometimes succeed like at the UN or very dedicated corporates, but most of the time in the residential space where people get two bin liners to source separate, that um, in honesty tends to be a bit of a failure because most people don't do that. And the reason they don't do that is because there are no enforcement mechanisms. So versus in Europe or the US, you know, it's either the city that has a contract or the individual waste company has an exclusive contract in an area. So there are certain things you can do if someone doesn't comply with the rules. In Kenya, we have an open market where there's almost 200 waste collection companies. So if we try to enforce people to source separate and then they don't do it, then um, they can easily switch to another company. So that's that's a big challenge. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and here just um, a few um, photos to give a sense of uh, our recent um, um, investments in uh, plastic recycling. Um, so we have basically um, focused a lot on plastic recycling. So uh, we have now four buyback centers. So we at the moment collect about 150 tons of plastic waste through our buyback centers. We're looking to increase that to close to 600 tons uh, by end of the year. Um, and we're trying to create a lot of positive impact for waste pickers. So that means that we just don't buy materials from them. We also give them other benefits. So they get protective equipment. We have opened two kindergartens for waste pickers at dump sites so that they don't have their children with them on the dump site, but they can actually you know, get, um, get some kind of um, support. Um, and then we also do health checkups for waste pickers. Then on the next one, you see our recycling plan for rigid plastics. So that's where we process all kinds of three-dimensional containers with a focus on single-use fast food containers where we're the only processor in Kenya. The next, the next one is our flexible recycling plant that we opened only a few months ago. So that's Kenya's largest plants for flexible packaging or people also sometimes call that soft packaging. Um, so there we are at the moment still processing little because the plant is just starting, but we have a capacity for up to 450 tons a month. And then we've recently also in this year um, now commissioned two palletizers. So before we were just producing flakes and now we are also making pallets both from the rigids and the flexibles. And, you know, as a recycler, once you make pallets, it's much easier to sell uh, plastics because every plastic manufacturer can take pallets, but only few can take flakes. So that's really helped kind of expand our offtake market for plastics. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so this just on an, a few impact numbers. Um, so as I mentioned, we are now active mostly across Nairobi metropolitan area. We're just starting collection in Mombasa in the next two months. We already have a buyback center there. Um, across our operations, yeah, we do 90 tons a day. We have more than 500 staff. Uh, we try to hire as many women as a waste company as possible. So at the moment we are at about 50% to be precise at 48%. So we're trying to bring that up and we try to pay more than the industry average for the people um, that we employ. Um, and then, yeah, we have an average of 90 to 95% recycling rate, which probably is one of the highest rates in the world. We also offer public stations where the public can bring back waste, even if they're not our clients. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of waste streams we process in-house. Um, next slide. Yes, that was it. Um, so I hope I stayed within the time limit. So thanks very much. And I shall remain open for questions, I believe at the end of the other presentations right now. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very impressive that you have built this uh, ecosystem already. And 95% of the recycling rate has been already achieved. And then also it's really, uh, um, it's very great that you have been also providing some protection for the waste pickers and then also the kids, uh, the education for the kids. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yes, we're going to have a, a Q&A session uh, after, after this, dedicated to Q&A session. So, so we can uh, move on to another presentation. Thank you, Daniel, very much for your informative presentation. Now I would like to move on to um, Mr. 
Efrata Sabane's presentation. Uh, Mr. Efrata Sabane is a president of Ant e Mama, an eco social uh, business that empowers, empowers women through recycling and producing handmade crafts. And today, Mr. Bane will be uh, introducing his initiative uh, here, uh, which is also um, having a very strong agenda um, uh, issue here. Mr. Abane, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Could you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Could you turn on your camera or? I think it's turned off by the, I think it's ready, yeah. Is it ready? Yes, great. Yeah, now you can see me. Yes, I can see you very well, great. Can you share your screen? Okay, perfect. There you go. Great, perfect. Please go ahead. Floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much for this opportunity. So I'm gonna uh, let you know on Andemama. It's uh, uh, eco-social organization here in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So let me go to the next slide. So Andemama is uh, uh, our one core volume. So these are the three uh, main uh, pillars of the uh, company. The Andemama is an eco-social business organization which work on the community empowerment and sustainable environment. So as you can see on the, this uh, diagram, there's a uh, Andemama, Mamas and Environment. So we try to link up those elements with uh, empowerment, life-giving and uh, caring. So between the Mamas and the Environment, there's life-giving opportunity and between the Environment and Andemama, there's a caring uh, kind of uh, relationship and Andemama and uh, Mamas, there is economic empowerment. So we try to find the core value of this organization. So we call the spirit of mama's love. Um, we call our first project also the spirit of mama's love project. So under mama is, uh, have a big, huge dream of transforming an African low human development created on 0 0.8, which implements uh, two things. The first thing is community empowerment, such as uh, Less than two dollars communities are exist in Addis Ababa and Ethiopia. So we're trying to solve those uh, financially struggling mamas. The other thing is uh, fine tuning or impacting the sustainable environment. So as you can see here, uh, in Ethiopia, uh, there's a huge uh, people living in extreme poverty. So, the number so between short people and people who live in extreme poverty. Also in Africa, one person will live in extreme poverty for three weeks. So the spirit of my project is Mr. Fratus. Sorry that the, your voice is a little bit faint. Could you try to talk to your uh, mic closer? Yes. Could you try to talk? Uh, we are, we are still not hearing you. We can't hear you very well. So maybe could you try to unplug your microphone? And then you use your computer's mic. Uh, we are still not very much. Can you hear? Can you try to talk a little bit more? Uh, no. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah, great. Now I can, I can hear oh, okay. you. Great. Thank you. Let me just yeah. create the volume. Sorry for the convenience. No worries. Uh, 
I think my presentation is displayed, right? Yes, yes, it's been, it's displayed nicely. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So these are the four things we're working on. The first thing is empowering uh, financially struggling mamas in, here in Addis Ababa. The second thing we're trying to address uh, used paper collection. Nowadays, Ethiopia is uh, recycling or collect, effectively collecting 10% of the total uh, uh, total usage. Ethiopia uses nowadays around 220,000 uh, tons per annum. So uh, if you calculate the math, 10% is 20 tons per annum. Ethiopia will effectively collect, but uh, international studies show that 70% of the paper can be collected and reused in upcycles. So we're trying to uh, collect effectively. The third thing is we securely uh, distract documents for organizations and international here in Addis Ababa. And the fourth element is we try to upcycle uh, products as you can see on the uh, right bottom side of the, uh, the screen. So we make baskets and uh, coasters, flower baskets and so on. So these are handcrafted by our important mamas. So these are the drawbacks and the good side of the, uh, the industry. The A and D are the drawbacks, the effective collection of uh, upcycled uh, user papers are very difficult here in Addis Ababa. The other thing is the, the low end policies or the won't favor recycling and uh, reusing on here in Addis Ababa. So the low end policies and proclamation are the, the basic drawbacks. The other thing is there's efficient and effective infrastructure here and surrounding Addis Ababa. Almost seven recycling industries are available, but they're working under their capacity due to in improper collection or ineffective collection. Other thing is there is a huge demand of uh, scrap paper recycling from the infrastructures. So we try to, to breach this effective collection and sorting and bailing process to the recyclers and uh, we try to manage those uh, gaps. The other thing we try to understand is recycling rates and how do we dispose the awareness of the uh, community is very low. So we try to uh, create awareness throughout the city at the Ababa. So this is our, the major gap we try to identify and fill up the gaps. The other thing, there's seven recycling companies, as I mentioned earlier, but they're working under their capacity. So we try to bridge that one. In addition, their uh, feasibility studies uh, lie on importing uh, scrap paper from uh, Dubai, China, and uh, other African countries. But here in Addis, there is a, uh, an abundance of uh, scrap paper. So the other thing is we try to upcycle and craft materials from these products, newspaper, magazines, and color paper. So we process these things and uh, craft uh, beautiful products. As you can see, we are training 15 uh, empowering struggling mamas through this uh, product. So uh, 15 of them are uh, fully uh, understand the process and graduated from our training center. So they're crafting and producing those beautiful products like you can see on the screen, these are the products. So there is a huge demand of this upcycle product. Ethiopia and Africa are very rich of handcrafting those beautiful products. So our aim is to achieve uh, 1,050 mamas with a monthly payment of 2,400 2, per month. So when you forecast this, we try to mobilize 30 million Ethiopian people per annum through the community. And the other thing, the, the primary collectors, we call them janitors, we try to engage 10,000 janitors throughout Addis Ababa. Uh, when we operate fully on 20,000 uh, 20, ton per annum, they will uh, generate 100 million Ethiopian members per annum. The other thing we will uh, create a job creation 
of uh, a minimum of 1,000. The other thing, these beautiful products, when we, when we uh, fully operate, we are uh, planning to uh, produce 500,000 items per annum. So if we uh, multiply this with the average price of the products, we'll uh, generate 62 million for the Ethiopian community. The other thing is the paradigm shift the mamas are uh, using. So before this project, they are complaining about their life and uh, related to their struggles. But now they say new life, West is valuable, worthy life, no more inspiration. I can live my dream. Those are the real mamas you can see on the screen that was uh, held up on the annual Mother, International Mother's Day picture. Sorry, so the economic impact are they listed here. The, we will try to solve the import substitution of the waste generated here in Addis. And the other thing, we will try to export those beautiful products to Europe and uh, the West America market. So the other thing will uh, solve the environmental aspect. So we have this is a, a real footage of uh, Koshe. This is called uh, West Dumping Site here in Addis Ababa. So there was a landslide happening, uh, I think, three or four years ago. UN Habitat engaged their professionals and uh, uh, applied the FOCOCA method to try to uh, improve this place. So in our project, we will decrease the landfill and the methane gas emission due to um, disposal of papers. The other thing is most of the organization are incinerating their uh, documents or when we fully engage in this project, they will stop the uh, incineration and the carbon emission will be less. The other thing is there's a comparison uh, of virgin fiber and recycling. So when we uh, recycle, there is no cutting trees. On the other side, there's 24 trees are being cut to uh, manufacture one ton of paper. And the other energy waste and solid waste are uh, rapidly, dramatically will uh, decrease. The other thing we try to uh, engage is, uh, we try to transform Ethiopia, the linear usage of waste to circular economy. So we take the now trend is we take the raw material, produce, consume, and waste in, in, a, in a not responsible way. The other thing is we, when we transform this uh, area, we will create a circular economy here in Addis and in Ethiopia, also in Africa. So we try to see the our project as. Uh, sustainable SDG goals, we will impact at least eight of them. So uh, due to my short period of time, I will mention the, only the points. No poverty will be one of them and gender equality because we are working on uh, mamas or uh, women. The other thing is we call it decent work. So after the mamas are graduated, they will work, craft the product from their home uh, playing with their child and uh, working with, from home. The other thing, we will reduce inequality because they will financially uh, stable. When there is financial stability between in the um, in our mamas, we will uh, solve the problem. The other thing, if we uh, collect responsibly, there will be sustainable cities and community. And the other thing is we have uh, climate action, the other thing is partnership for the goals. So these are the organization are engaged for our projects. These are our partners, Ethiopian Environmental Protection Authority, Ethiopian Women Enterprise Association, Addis Ababa Social Trust Fund, Ministry of Women, and Addis Ababa Environmental Protection Authority. These three are our uh, partners. So we will try to solve these gaps. The first thing is supply of the, we use paper, the customers, networking partners, training partners, financial partners, and we are uh, working on uh, getting land to
to fully uh, collect 20,000 ton per annum. So to give you a tip, we celebrated International Anwar uh, Mother's Day uh, here in Addis Ababa Intercontinental Hotel with our partners and our mamas and our suppliers. These are the some of the happy footage of uh, the event. Thank you very much. I hope I uh, used my time properly. Thank you very much. It was perfect timing. And thank you so much for sharing your experience and in a very innovative initiative for uh, with a strong emphasis on the gender aspects. And, and I, this is really a good reminder for us that uh, the solid waste management also uh, co-benefits the in terms of uh, poverty reduction, and also the green job creation. Thank you very much for all, for the strong reminder on, on this issue. So now I would like that. to thank you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to move on to a next presentation by Ms. Dr. Masahiro Yoshimura. Dr. Masahiro Yoshimura is a senior manager of International Business Development Unit of Doha Ecosystems, a company providing environmental solutions to waste treatment and contaminated so contaminated soil remediation. Uh, for the past 40 years, and Dr. Yoshimura has been working for them for more than 20 years. Um, Dr. Yosh Dr. Yoshimura, are you, are you there? Yes, I can see your screen perfectly and then your face too. So please go ahead, floor, floor is yours. Dr. Dr. Yoshimura, sorry, uh, could you sorry. unmute yourself? Yes, yeah, yeah. now we can hear you. Now, okay. can you hear my voice clearly? Okay. Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. Ah. Oh. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the detailed introduction. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Yoshimura from Doha Ecosystem. I am in charge of Obashi's business. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to make a presentation. Today, I'd like to talk about our recycling and waste management business in Japan and Southeast Asia. I'll start with the uh, introduction of business outline of our DOBA group, and then move on to uh, uh, explanation of metal recycling as an example, I'd like to focus on home appliances recycling. Firstly, about business outline of our DOA group. DOA ecosystem, which operates an environmental business, is one of the five operating companies under DOA Holdings. DOA Holdings started as a mining company in Japan in 1884 and has a history of about 140 years. We obtained sorting and separating technologies for metals from complicated ores through the mining business. Although we withdrew from the mining business in Japan about 30 years ago, we have applied these technologies to downstream business such as electronic met uh, materials, uh, metal processing, heat treatment, and environmental business. The history of mines is said to be the history of pollution. In fact, in a past in Japan, mining companies cause some serious pollution problems, such as air pollution, water pollution, and soil pollution. We, the group, have overcome these problems through technological development over a long period of time. Many of the basic technologies of our environmental business 
have been obtained through challenges for solving these pollution problems. Currently, Doha ecosystem has four major businesses. I mean, waste, man waste treatment, metal recycling, soil and groundwater remediation, and environmental logistics. As for waste treatment, we have factories in Japan and countries in Southeast Asia. In each country, we operate with mainly targeting hazardous waste treatment. In metal recycling business, we have strength to recover metals, cooperating with the smelters of our company group. This also aims use the household appliances and use the vehicles. At present, uh, Doha Group expands its business not only in Japan, but also in Southeast Asia. In Japan, four incinerator factories are located from south to north, covering the fall of Japan. These factories are located close to the area where a lot of waste generated. This is very effective for reduction of transportation costs. We also have two landfills. These mainly target incinerator ash generated from incinerators of local municipalities. Other than that, we have three wet recycling plants and one smelter. With combination of the characteristics of these plants, we can provide one stop, uh, provide our customers one stop services from waste collection to pretreatment and landfill disposal. Uh, next, regarding businesses in Southeast Asia, since 2009, we have been doing business in waste treatment and recycling businesses in China, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, and Myanmar. If I can introduce some recent news. In Indonesia, last year, we built an incinerator and started treatment of medical waste. This is to correspond to the domestic increase in waste generation. Furthermore, our new waste treatment facility is planned to start operation in October of this year in East Java Island, Indonesia. Here, uh, from now, I'd like to explain the general flow of metal recycling. Scrap of used home appliances, automobiles, and uh, electronic parts contains a lot of gold and silver and so on. Uh, variable metals are recovered from these urban mines and returned to the market as a product. In addition, catalysts uh, containing platinum, etc., uh, used to purify the exhaust gas from automobiles. Including these plants, such, such processing plants are located in a relatively small area and uh, making a, a recycling complex. Kosaka Smelting, uh, this is one of the Doha Group company, uh, fit is a core of the recycling smelting complex. Received e-waste such as used PC boards and zinc smelting byproducts as the main raw materials. In this facility, 
precious metals are, and uh, rare metals, including about 20 kinds of elements, can be recovered. Uh, today, I'd like to pick up an example of home appliance uh, recycling. In Japan, home appliance recycling law was enacted in 2001. Its purpose is, first, to reduce backfield volume into landfill and illegal dumping. Second, to recover metals such as iron and copper and rare metals. And third, to prevent environmental problems, problems caused by heavy metals or freon. Before the law enacted, these home household appliances were classified as a general waste and were mainly disposed in landfills. This is a rough flow of used home appliance recycling. After gathered, they are transported to the dismantling, dismantling factories. Parts containing useful metals such as copper are collected by hand and then sent to the crushing process. Since there are many kinds of elements of home appliances like uh, air conditioners. It's very difficult to disassemble by machine. Basically, they are disassembled by hand. Technologies required for recycling are sorting materials, identifying types, and recovering harmful substances such as freon. After that, magnetic sorter and wind power sorter separate iron scrap and waste plastic, etc., and collect variable metals. Depending on how they are separated, the same part can be both waste and variable. So it is a know-how how, uh, know -how of each company to dismantle efficiently and safely. In addition, uh, red glass and freon, which are harmful substances, are collected safely. Under this law, home appliance manufacturers are responsible for the collection and recycling of disposed home appliances. This is because the manufacturers have the most knowledge of the product. In Japan, when uh, purchasing new home appliances, used ones are often disposed, but uh, shops who sell new products are obliged to receive it once from their customers and hand them over to manufacturers for recycling. The customers have to pay its disposal cost. The manufacturers are uh, required to target the recycling rate uh, decided by the law. The recycling rate here is not the rate of collection, but the rate of recycling after collection. There are currently 45 home appliance recycling factories in Japan. Uh, they recycle, they recycle uh, about 16 million units annually. When disposed them, they are transported to, to the local recycling plant, which are existing in same area. Freon gas which is a greenhouse gas, air conditioners, and refrigerators. Under this law, freon are required to be collected, uh, reused, or destroyed. 
We properly、uh, collect it when dismantling air conditioners and refrigerators and destroy, destroy、uh, properly by heat at incinerator plant. Dr. Yoshimura? Yeah. Three minutes left. Okay. Three minutes, yes. At present, I think、uh, some environment pollution p r o b l e m may have been occurring due to improper recycling process. Advanced technology and the experience、uh, required to finally recover metals, including rare metal with high efficiency. Recycling with appropriate technology can, be,、uh, can solve such environmental problems. At the initial stage of recycling, We believe that one of the solutions is to build a recycling circulation system with advanced technologies in collaboration with other countries. We, DOWA Group, have established a 3R network in East Asia centered on Kosaka smelting in Japan. We are willing to contribute to the promotion of proper treatment and recycling for waste that have. That have been increasing in Southeast Asia.、Uh, this is、uh, the summary of my presentation. I think uh, uh, time is over. So、uh, I want to finish my presentation.、Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Yoshimura. I think this. A、uh, very informative presentation on the solutions,、uh, very much needed in Africa.、Uh, we are experiencing the increased amount of e waste generation in the continent. So, thank you very much for the very detailed technical、uh, presentation, very informative. So, now I would like to move on to our next presenter,、uh, Mr. Victor Boyle、uh, Kamolafe. A founder of、uh, Givo. He started his career in finance and in accounting and then has 13 years of experience in finance, sustainability, product development, manufacturing, and tech solutions. So, Mr. Komlafe will present his company's solution in recycling in Nigeria. Mr. Komlafe, are you there? Victor? Victor? Oh, maybe we lost him? Okay, so maybe let's move on to、uh, ne the next. I don't see Victor、uh, here. So, in this case, then I now would like to move on to. Next presentation. Maybe let's wait、uh, for、uh, Mr. Victor Boyle Kamlafe to come in after while we are moving on to the next presentation.、Uh, now, I'd like to move on to the next presentation by Mr. Pauline Bregea. He was in the uh, panel uh, for the panel discussion yesterday and then slightly introduced.、Um, His thoughts in terms of the how to develop a solid waste management. So, so as I mentioned, that the, he is a CEO of a COPET company for environment and development in Rwanda. And as I introduced to him yesterday, he will present how Kigali became one of the cleanest c i t i e s in Africa. COPET is uh, uh, the, the leading company who developed the waste collection, waste management system in Kigali. It, which is the, one of the cleanest c i t i e s in Africa. Pauline, is he? Pauline, are you here? Yes. Yes, great. Maybe turn on your camera. Hmm. Okay, do you see me? Thank you for joining us、yeah. again. Thank you very、mm. much. Would you be able to share your screen or do you want me to share, share my screen for your presentation?、Uh, let me try.
You see it? We are, it's coming, I think. Um, mm. okay. it's still not, it, we are still waiting. Shall I share my screen for your presentation? No, let me see. Yes, now we are seeing your screen. Okay. Is it in a full screen or? Uh... Not, not full screen, so maybe if you go to the presentation mode. Uh, like this, do you see? Yes, perfect. It is Thank in a full you. screen, eh? It is, yes. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you for the occasion again to make a presentation, a short presentation about the Kigali experience to improve waste management system. Uh, and uh, I will be able to share uh, the shift that Chigari is now doing, shifting from classic system where, we, for example, waste is mixed and uh, we have shifted that step. Now we are in a, a modern system where waste is separated from the source. And we are two other so smart system where an ICT uh, will be in introduced to manage the waste management operations. Uh, so directly going to uh, my presentation, we have we have what we do uh, with Kigali is to uh, to share the responsibilities. So I represent Coped, a waste management private company, but we have the role of uh, private operators and the role of government. So on the government side. Uh, we, we, for, for now, we, for Uganda started instruction and the country development in all, almost all sectors. So, but for waste management sector itself, Uganda is now guided by different policies. As you can see, we have uh, laws and regulations coming from uh, Uganda environmental policy, environmental law, sanitation policy, integrated waste management system, E-waste management policy, environmental health, regulation for solid waste collection and transportation, and all of these regulation up to uh, COVID-19 guidelines to, 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 to manage the face mask. This. So this is the Rwanda regulations. Uh, now, to get in now evolution from that years, uh, There was a, a period prior to 2010, there was no national policy and uh, or there, there was no harmonized regulation framework addressing solid waste management. So only NGO association, private, will undertaking the waste management activities with, of course, the limited financial and technical change by the rapid urbanization, it's the boundaries, the emergence of a new institution over time and the environmental emergencies have shifted how waste collection is now undertaken uh, up to now. But at present, uh, the solid waste management is managed in a linear way. Uh, We are having a little bit of technical connection issues okay, with but him. Overall waste generated is collected and disposed to landfill Pauline, in, a, in, a, in an organic way. Pauline, sorry, yes, yes. we are having a little bit of, yes, we having a little bit of 
cut from your presentation. Maybe could you try to turn off your camera so that we can um, save yes. the yeah, data? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. So, so can you go ahead? Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. So, as now, so that was um, after genocide, the situation before 2010 and up the present. Uh, and let me move now to the targets from now to 2024. The country have set the targets where we have 40% of solid waste collection and should be recycled countrywide. We have 80% of domestic waste to be recycled. We have 50% of households to sort their waste from the source. And we have also 50% of generated e-waste to be recycled and it turned into uh, usable materials. So this is ambitious target that we have as a, a country. And uh, we have also strategies uh, that have kept. So apart from the ambitious target that we have, where 80% of domestic waste will be uh, recycled by 2024, uh, there is also that shift. So the strategy also we have as a city is to have a shift from a classic to modern to smart system. Another strategy in place uh, from some time is a total privatization for waste activities. So through PPP or uh, private partnerships. Another strategy is uh, to decide to go for integrated waste management system as a sustainable way for solid waste management. And we have another strategy to start a compulsory sorting from the source. And that started from this year. And the last strategy is to introduce the, the ICT in waste management. So, uh, but we have also still, we have to share with you the, the challenges, the challenges that we have, like uh, in the other African cities, we have a waste data problem. So uh, it is now we, the city is, is introducing ICT to see if we can come up with a, a systematic collection of waste data. The skills update, upgrading also, that is an issue because we have also to upgrade the skills for waste generators, waste collectors, local administrators. Landfill was also an issue. Now, city of Chigai have a tender under process to build the Senate landfill. We have an extended producer responsibility where Rwanda has to enforce this strategy that is now uh, on validation stage. And uh, we have big rate of collection. These are silly, a, a, a low rate of recycling. So, so all of these are the issues that now are on the table for the city. And by 2024, all of has to be addressed. And that is the role of the government. Now coming to the role of private, private sector also, they have to play their role to keep the city clean, green and smart. Uh, I have to share with you the, the, the role of COPED in this journey. So uh, we, we, all of us, we know that waste is, can pollute the, the soil, the wet water and the, and the air. And now uh, we have seen the role of private sector is to be uh, for the Chigarise case of Rwanda case, we have to participate in the entire value chain from collection to transportation, to treatment and to disposal. And for circular economy also, there is a, it is another role where the president has to play a role to help the city shifting from a linear approach, like taking waste, transport and dispose, and go to a circular approach where waste is generated sorted from 100% sorted, transported differently, treated at 90% and be able to dispose 2% while 8% can be incinerated as a hazardous waste. So uh, in reality, what we have, uh, how we, do, we did as COPED, we tried to start sorting from the source, from the residential household, 
The residentials are given two bags, one bag for organic, that is the green, another bag for inorganic. This is what happened now. And for commercial, we make sure also we, they use plastic containers and with different colors for commercial and for special, while for also liquid waste has to be collected separately. So finally, if that is done, what will be going to sorting recovery, sorting source recovery center, where waste is sorted and again, sorted again to make organic, organic fertilizer from organic waste and briquettes and recyclables they put aside for recyclers. And we have also landfill and senator to come to take the rest. So in practice, this is what we do. We do compost, we do briquettes, and we process inorganic. We bail and give hand over to recyclers. So as compared, finally, we, we are able to, as a pioneer in the country, we are providing four, five services in one. So we have education service where we educate all our clients and the non-clients. We collect, that is a collection. We have a pre-treatment that is sorting advanced separation. We have treatment facility that we manage and we also we participate into the city beautification. So that's all what we have prepared for this. And uh, we, our last message, message to encourage everyone to be a change agent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pauline. It's very impressive achievements in Kigali for developing such a, a solid waste management uh, chain and also the recycling. And, and it's really impressive to see the composting facilities and also the recyclables sorted. Great, thank you so much for your presentation. Now I'd like to move on to uh, the presentation by Mr. Tatsuro Maruhashi. Uh, from JFE Engineering Corporation. Uh, Mr. Tatsuro Maruhashi is, a, is, a, is a from G JFE Engineering Corporation, one of the leading waste to energy plant companies in Japan. He has an experience in the business administration in the trade and construction sector, especially in Africa, and he's now moving on to the, um, the waste sector. Mr. Maruhashi, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Thank you for introducing myself. Great. And I hope maybe if you we... could uh, turn on your camera and then I'll also uh, try to share your screen. Right. Can yeah. you? Show... Yeah, we can okay. see your face. All right. So, uh, yes. So, everyone, uh, hello, and thank you for having me here for my presentation today. Okay. So, First of all, uh, my presentation may be a bit short, but I believe uh, it is intensive and has an uh, impact. So, okay, please let me share my screen. Excuse me, uh, can you see my presentation? Yeah, we are seeing, yes, we are seeing your uh, PowerPoint. Yes, okay. it's perfect. Please go ahead. Right. Okay, so once again, uh, my name is Maru Hashi from JFE Engineering Corporation. I am in charge of uh, Africa business development. So today I'd like to uh, talk about uh, this decarbonation uh, through our waste resource solutions. Okay, so we are an engineering uh, company of the JFE Group, which is one of the largest corporate group in Japan. We are developing various infrastructure business around the world. It covers a wide range of fields, such as environment, energy, bridges, and recycling, etc. So, Excuse me. As you see this slide, uh, we have JFE Holdings. Under JFE Holdings, we have uh, three business peers. Uh, one is JFE Steel, 
and JFE Engineering, and JFE Shoji is a trading company and related company called Japan Marine United. And uh, okay, we have uh, uh, business sectors such as, once again, uh, environmental solutions and energy industries, infrastructure and recycling and power generation and etc. Okay, uh, five initiatives for 2030, focusing on the circular economy. For 2030, to realize our global uh, circular economy, we will strengthen our five initiatives. Three business fields of waste to resource, utility, service, and infrastructure in addition to carbon neutral to reduce CO2 emissions and DX as the foundation of the other four. Okay, this slide in project in Kenya, the carbonization project. So, uh, the Olkaria uh, two geothermal power project. We have an experience of decarbonization project in Kenya in the beginning of uh, year 2000. Okay, so now let's uh, move on the topic of waste. So here's a slide uh, I extracted. Uh, it's uh, one of the dumping sites in Kenya, Dandola. I think uh, a presentation, Taka Taka Company. To open dumping site, I've seen in this photo, is unfortunately still a common waste disposal situation in each country. As we all know, it is a very dangerous situation for the community and the residents. A large amount of uh, methane gas is also generated from the highly piled up waste, which is a worrying situation for the viewpoint of GHG reduction. On the other hand, this picture is a very common case in Japan. A waste incinerator power generation facility has been constructed in a residential area in the metropolis of Tokyo and is being operated safely. This Nerima insulation plant was designed and built by JFE Engineering and is environmentally friendly and in harmony with the local community. Right, in Asia, uh, this is Myanmar's first WTE waste to energy plant constructed also by JFE Engineering. And this project, as you can see the logo, on the left side. So this project is financially supported by the Japanese government through financing programming for the joint crediting mechanism, JCM. We have achieved an annual GHG reduction of approximately 4,000 tons in terms of CO2. This plant has been in stable operation from 2017 to present. Right. Uh, installation of uh, waste to uh, energy avoids emission of methane associated with disposed organic waste in a damping site. And electricity generated by the uh, waste to energy displaces 
electricity from a grid, which is generated using fossil fuels, resulting in GHG emission reductions. So the project was uh, resigned, uh, sorry, the project was registered as the first GCM project of Myanmar in 2020, and it will achieve continuous GHG emissions reductions through 15 years project period. So here, monitoring uh, parameters, we are monitoring four parameters, quantity of MSW fed into WTE, quantity of electricity generated by the project, quantity of electricity consumed by the facility, quality, a quantity of auxiliously uh, fossil fuel consumed. The four parameters are important, not only for the JCM scheme, but also for the proper operation of the facility. So JFE Engineering Corporation is dispatching experienced supervisors to the site. Mr. Norhashi? Yes. Yes, uh, I would like to alert you that you have three minutes left. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, best practice uh, IGES 2021. In addition, according to uh, IGES, Institute of Global Environment Strategies in Japan, the waste energy plant in Yangon, which I explained earlier in the previous slide, is highly evaluated as contributing to the achievement of many SDGs. So here's the final slide. So this is the uh, latest case of Jeffy uh, WT uh, project in Bac Ninh, Vietnam. This project is also a JSM uh, model project and uh, loan from the International Finance Corporation, IFC of the World Bank Group and uh, Finland IFC branded finance for climate program uh, will be used for finance of plant construction. Gas, gas emissions by approximately 600,000 tons over 15 years, which means 40,000 tons per year. This project implemented under the cooperation of the Vietnamese and the Japanese governments. So this is the end of my presentation. And thank you very much for watching my presentation. And uh, in the padlet, uh, you, you will see my uh, company information and my contact. Even after the, this session, you can please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Maruhashi for the very interesting presentation. I think that uh, some of the, some of the uh, African countries are still very, um, waste to energy plant uh, technologies could be uh, still very unaffordable technologies. However, like some of the countries, maybe that the, these technologies can fit. So those are things probably we should really note. However, that is very impressive that the uh, Vietnamese uh, project is uh, getting a different blend of the financing so that it, those are challenge, financial challenges are being kind of over, overcome. Thank you very much. Um, now I, I would like to go back to the, uh, another presenter, uh, Mr. Victor Boyle Komolafe. Uh, Victor, are you here? Hmm, maybe he's not yet here. So then I would like to move on to um, move on to this Q and A session for this. And then we have lots of uh, questions uh, on the chat. So now I would like to go one by one. 
So first, I that I have a questions. So we have a lot of questions for uh, Taka Taka Solutions at the moment. So Daniel, are you here? Daniel, I am very much here. Okay, great. So uh, yes, there's I'm lots here. of five five questions. So I would like to go one by one for 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 the for your the questions for your company. So Takataka question one, a very impressive work. I would like to hear how was impact to your business when plastic ban was introduced in Kenya in the past? Was it positive, negative, or rather neutral? Thank you. This is uh, from uh, Mr. Mito, Toshikazu Mito. And in the second question, I'll just go one by one, yeah? And I wish to hear more from Takataka Solution about financing model for infrastructure development and sustaining operations. This is from Kobel Tsasanyane. Yes, sorry, I'm sorry for the, for the pronunciation. And then a the third question is, can we get your experience in a way sorting practice at the source especially in a household waste management, what are the challenges and how did you overcome it? This is from Don D. And then the fourth question is, any challenges with the county government in your operations uh, in Kenya? This is uh, from uh, Sami Kisa. And then the fifth question is, does Takataka Taka Group recycle plastic waste into paving blocks? If yes, can they allow one of our youth groups involved in plastic waste recycling to visit their site for learning tool? This is from Francois Alwende from DRC. <laughs> okay, sounds, a, uh, fine. Let me try to not monopolize the 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 the, the questions. So I'll, I'll try to be quick on all of them. So yeah, so thanks, thanks for all the questions. Um, so to the first question, um, I think it's important to clarify what exactly was banned when Kenya introduced the plastic bag ban, right? I think when you read about it, it sounds like Kenya banned all plastic bags, but actually what they banned was supermarket high density polyethylene shopping bags only. So it was really a subcategory of bags that they banned and it was only supermarket bags and within the supermarket bags there was only one type of bag. So very quickly today if you go shopping in Kenya you still get plastic bags. Now they're much nicer, they're more reusable and that's great but they're still plastic bags, right? So it's not, so we just need to be clear that it was one type of category of supermarket shopping bag that was banned. As a result, I think how that has impacted our work quite minimally because it was only one category of supermarket shopping bag, right? The majority of flexible or soft plastics in food packaging and other things still exist, right? So it was maybe changed the total plastic waste stream by 1% at, or 2%, right? So it was a fairly minimal change. However, environmentally speaking, it has helped because those were the plastics that were especially flying around the country. They were given away for free by all shops. Um, so as a result, they were leading to a lot of yeah, environmental pollution, and that has significantly reduced. But in terms of how we are affected as a company, because it was such a small percentage of the overall plastic waste stream, the effect has been not minimal, but fairly negligible. Um, so I think that as an answer to the first question. Uh, with regards to financing models, and that is a great and slightly complex question, so let me try to um, um, yeah, be brief. So I think, you know, in, in Europe and the West or the US, a lot of financing for infrastructure is indirectly or directly done through governments, right? Governments give out a tender. Through that tender, a company can apply and they most of the time don't get the financing, but they get a guarantee on volume types of waste and maybe price. They can then kind of build up infrastructure and refinance it over the years. Um, now that model in most countries across Africa, including Kenya, doesn't really exist because basically um, for various reasons, the governments don't have the money to pay for infrastructure or give these kind of guarantees. A lot of the waste doesn't get collected. The waste that does collect, it gets collected by the private sector and the private sector is used to paying very low gate fees at the dump site. So as a quick point, the average gate fee in the US is $53 that you pay to offload one ton of waste. The average gate fee at Dandora and most dump sites in Kenya and the region is $1. So if there's an investor who would want to put up a landfill or any other infrastructure, you can't refinance that with $1 gate fees, right? So as a result, that's why there exists so little infrastructure in the region because 
the dumping fees and the ways the, the cost there is to dispose waste is so little that it's not viable to refinance infrastructure. So I think that as a generic point. So what does that mean for Taka Taka Solutions? We today, our goal is obviously to bring down the price point per ton of waste that we manage to such a level that we can compete with the dump site um, over time. In the short term is we're only focusing on waste that we collect, right? So internally, our collection business unit is paying a gate fee to our sorting business unit. And that gate fee is still significantly higher than what you would pay at the dump site. So it's about $7 a ton. So we're trying to bring that down to become competitive. You also have to factor in not just the pure dollar value of the fee, but also other miscellaneous issues like being stuck at the dump site repair costs, offloading times. So you can probably charge a little bit more than the dump site if you're more efficient in terms of time spent and other things. But basically for now, we are financing the infrastructure privately. There's no guarantees and we're only doing it for our self-collected waste. We have intentions of going beyond that, but for that, we need to further bring down the cost we can charge so we can effectively privately compete without guarantees with the very, very low costs that dump sites are charging. And I think in a way, that is one of the big, big challenges in waste management in Africa, that disposal is just too cheap. So I hope that answer wasn't overly confusing. Uh, coming to answer number three. Um, so I, I, I appreciate that you think we're very good at household waste separation. Actually, we are completely terrible at it. Uh, and we more or less have had many failures. And we had a few commercial customers where people were very motivated, like the UN or Safaricom or big corporates where it's working. But across the household level, it's actually quite deplor deplorable and barely working at all. So I can share a few lessons quickly, but those lessons are, I think, necessary things to make it work. But clearly, they're not sufficient because it's not really working for us. So the necessary things I would consider there to be there is one, you know, if you give people two garbage bags, you also need to have, make sure they have two bins. That sounds simple, but at the beginning, we assume people buy, bought their own bins and they never did, and then they never sorted. They were trying to fit a smaller bin for a bin liner for organic waste into their normal big bins. So you just need to think the whole system, you know, where are the bins? Who pays for the bins? What size are the bins? You need to do a lot of education and the education is at multiple levels because often, you know, at least in fancier households in Kenya, you have the owners, then you have the mates or the staff. So everyone needs to be educated. And then uh, you need to give regular feedback and check and that's almost impossible. And you need a mechanism to do something if they don't comply and we don't have that mechanism, which is also why we're failing. So from an invisible point of view, you need carrots and you need sticks. And if you don't have ex exclusive collection rights in an area, you cannot enforce any sticks and then people don't sort. So that's as a quick answer to that. But in summary, we're not doing so well. Uh, county government, I mean, Kenya is, we don't have contracts with the county, right? We get licenses from the counties to be allowed to collect, but we don't have a municipal contract. So therefore we don't have a lot of challenges on that level because we don't have a deeper relationships like would be the case in other countries because we don't get contracts or zoning or any licensing from them. Although we'd love that to be different, but because it's not, we don't have little interaction. Therefore we don't have a lot of problems with them. Doesn't mean we don't have some. To the last questions, and then I hopefully we will exalt it. So we don't make paving blocks. And uh, sorry to say, I actually think most of the times paving blocks are not a good solution to plastic waste. There are some cases it is. Let me quickly explain. Um, we specialize on making raw materials for plastic manufacturers. So those are either flakes or pellets. We don't make end products. And there's a reason for that. Because we think people who know about end products should make end products and recyclers should make raw materials for people who make end products. Why? Because ultimately in recycling, it's a question of life cycle assessment and life cycle length, right? The moment you make a paving block or a fencing pole, you're making a product that is very difficult to recycle again. If you make high quality recycled pellets or flakes, ideally those raw materials can be used to make similar or close to similar quality products um, you know, if you had a fast food tray, then maybe you can make a bucket out of it. Then once you recycle the bucket, you can make another bucket out of it. So over the recycling life of that plastic, you can maybe make eight, 10 products. If you go in directly into a finished product, like a brick, a fencing pole, then you've downcycled directly and you can't recycle again. So the higher quality of the recycling, the closer you are able to make a product of a similar quality. And those products tend to be made by specialized companies. So we believe they should do the job. So that's why we are focusing on 
making raw materials for them and not finished products. There are some plastics that are very low in quality, like multi-laminate, difficult to recycle plastics, where it is justified from my point of view to go directly into lower quality end products like bricks or fencing poles, but it's only for those. And often I feel like there's a bit of an heroism around recycling paving blocks or fencing posts. And I think it's a good thing, but it's a good thing as long you only use the very hard to recycle product and you're not wasting a nice plastic to make a low quality product that then cannot be recycled again. Um, so those are my five answers. Uh, thanks for Thank all the questions. You. Thank you very much. It's a very much, uh, uh, the answer is based on the realism of the recycling and then this really big reminder that the practicality of the recycling is not so much a fancy uh, heroism uh, stories uh, uh, around that. So we have to really remind ourselves about those practicality and realistic issues around developing uh, solid waste management systems. Thank you, Daniel, for this so much. Um, now I would like to move on to the questions to DOA Ecosystems. Um, Ms. Dr. Yoshimura, are you here? Yes. Great. So we have three questions for DOA Ecosystems. And uh, the first question is, how can Africa gain on technology transfer? from Japan, especially when many have benefited from JICA training. This is from Kobel Sasanyane, uh, Mr. Mister, I think. Uh, and then the next question is, does DOA have a partner organization in Africa where some local groups can share some knowledge with them? This is from Francois uh, uh, from, from DRC. And then the third question, how can we create an experience sharing in a partnership with African companies? This is from Efratus, uh, the today's presenter. Okay. Put it in here. The first question yeah. is a little bit complicated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is. Uh, um, so I shared it uh, with you as well. Okay. Uh, about uh, my presentation today, I introduced uh, how to how to recycle uh, used home uh, appliances, and I introduced uh, the method that uh, basically uh, first uh, you need to dismantle by hand. Uh, it's not uh, difficult and uh, investment, investment uh, is not so big, so uh, you can start. Uh, but uh, as for uh, uh, after uh, corrected metals uh, to uh, make a metal product, uh, the corrected metals have to be sent to a uh, smelter, uh, it's not so easy uh, because the construction of uh, smelter is so big. So uh, I, as I, uh, as I explained, the, uh, you need to collaborate with other companies uh, that the uh, uh, final, final phase, I mean uh, smelter, uh, the uh, sent to the country that uh, the smelter is located. Uh, and uh, at the point of dismantling of uh, home appliances are uh, how to dismantle efficiently. And uh, to do so, uh, you need you need uh, know how, know how, and uh, by by knowing the know-how, I, uh, you can, I, I believe you can increase the uh, recycling rate. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm not sure this answer, uh, my, my answer uh, is correct to your question, but for a uh, second question, uh, until now, we haven't had any partner Partner company partnership in Africa. Uh, 
now uh, Doha uh, is focusing on the area in uh, Southeast Asia only. But in future, uh, I think there's a the possibility to uh, enter into the market in Africa. Uh, and the question to third one. Third question is, uh, I think third, third question is almost the same as the first one. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, all, maybe if Rajas, if you could uh, clarify all this question. But um, it's uh, almost uh, about how uh, you, how the African companies can develop partnership with the, with the Doha ecosystems. If you are looking for some African partners or around that, that question is about that. I also got another question, Ms. Dr. Yoshimura. Yes. Uh, uh, so the, 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 uh, un, another question is from uh, Noraldin from Palestine, and he's asking if, what's, the, what's the technology to um, recycle and treat uh, solar panel waste? Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, uh, now, DOA is uh, uh, trying to develop uh, uh, recycling technologies for solar, solar panels. And because, uh, uh, as you know, uh, some of uh, metals like uh, silver uh, is uh, used. So the point is, uh, I think, we think that they how to dismantle uh, efficient, efficiently. So, and because uh, uh, as for uh, recycling uh, solar panels, uh, many, many uh, panels will be generated in future. So we are now trying to develop uh, automatic system, not by hand, uh, but as uh, still under developing process. Uh, yeah, this is a current situation. Okay, I hope this answered the question. And then uh, I would like to go into a questions for the COPET. Pauline, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, great, great. So the question for COPET is that we have four questions. And the first one is, what is the secret used to change mindsets of Rwandans towards good environmental practices? This is from Kobe, Mr. Kobeli from Lesotho. And then another question is, how Rwanda has realized strong enforcement of solid waste management laws and policies? This is from your friend, Amito. And, and then what kind of difficulties have you faced in this work? Do you convert paper, do you convert paper waste into briquettes? This is uh, from uh, Ms. Satsuki Goto from Japan, I think. And then there's the fourth question is, uh, can you further explain the meaning of IWM value chain in development, integrated waste management value chain development? And then how a country like South Sudan used this approach in developing its solid waste management. This is coming from a JICA South Sudan office. Okay. Thank you for the questions and trying to respond quickly. <clears throat> My first question is about the secret used to change the mindset of Rwandans. Uh, I can say we, we have used like a combination, a combination of uh, a set of combination of uh, different things. And here I can list just uh, three, highlighting three elements. 
One is setting regulations and doing a serious enforcement on those regulations. Yeah, because we know um, in Africa, text exists in different countries. We have nice text, we have policies, we have everything in terms of theory text. But the difference with Rwanda is the enforcement part. So yes, we do have text, but the only difference we have is the enforcement mechanism that we put in place to enforce those texts. This is what really changed the, 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 the situation in Rwanda in general. A second secret is a, a strong public awareness. So Rwanda is a, a country that organized a, a competition, a competition, understand a competition for clean up the city. So when we say keep our city clean, green and safe, because our city is mainly clean, green and safe, uh, there is a competition among the local authorities to, to okay, from the city of Chigari, they organize a competition per sector. So for example, the cleanest sector, a sector is an entity, an administrative entity, which is evaluated by high authority, a combination of police, a different authorities. So once you, you, you are the first clean sector, you, you, you win, you win like a truck, a waste truck, a pickup for administration. So this public awareness from the population to authorities, to local authority. So it is a competition work. Now, the third, the third secret is the private sector engagement. So we also as a private, we are engaged by the, the government. We are engaged seriously to implement the government plans. So this, uh, I can say, <laughs> what have changed the mindset and uh, everyone is aware about uh, what, is, what is acceptable and not acceptable in terms of cleaning and waste management in the community. I think I uh, have uh, highlighted just those three main. So about the number, second question, uh, how Rwanda realizes strong enforcement on solid waste management laws and policy? So my answer would be, the enforcement came with different strategies also. So now Toshi is asking about how, how? Now also Rwanda set different strategies. And one of them, I can highlight also three strategies that we use. One is to set up a one cleanup day per month. So our last Saturday of the month in Rwanda, no one can move around. So everything is stopped. Let's say not general services or public service, but no uh, public transport. So no different services are stopped and everyone is called to, to go in, um, in the community to clean up the community area location. So one day clean up day per month. Second, another, another strategy for enforcement is the capacity development for local authorities. So local authorities are, are uh, let's say, are trained how to control the private sector, the private operators while doing waste collection. The design performing, perform, we call it performance contract with a high authority to control everything. Now the last point about the strategy is the engagement of the police. Police is there to really uh, help on the enforcement. That's the second question. I think uh, I have tried. Now the difficulty, the, the, how the difficulties with uh, waste management and uh, the third question about convert paper in briquette. So we also, we do not, uh, we, uh, for organic waste, we only transform organic
We just lost yeah. Pauline. Where is the organic fertilizer? Pauline, sorry, Pauline. like no. we lost you a minute. So organic waste, I think you are talking about organic waste challenge. Maybe if you could repeat a little bit. Yes, organic waste, what we transform is organic waste into organic fertilizer. That is the wet organic waste. But dry organic waste, like agriculture waste, we transform to brigades. But the rest of recyclables, those are high value recyclables like paper, cotton, metal, plastic, that, those are channeled into recycling, not in, into briquettes like if cottons, no. They, they are going to recycling. Great, thank you. So I think that the, we have more questions. So now the last value in the I value chain mode in Uganda. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. It, uh, it's about EWMS. That is the integrated waste management system. For our value chain, we integrate mainly four components. The first component we integrate, we call it waste. waste education. So we make sure the household, a commercial premises, all is educated about there is that education process in Rwanda. So that is what is integrated, number one. Second integration is waste proper waste collection and transportation. So that means when the waste is well sorted, it has to be well collected separately. Third integration is waste treatment. So we make sure that once waste is sorted, it has to be, the, the, the percentage which is sorted, it has to be treated. The fourth integration is about safe disposal. So in Rwanda, we make sure disposal of the residues is disposed in a safe way, in a safe mode. So there is no longer illegal dump site, illegal dumping, or non-controlled dumping. No. Now the fifth integration is the ICT, the, in, the telecommunication, the communication, the, the... Pauline, sorry, Pauline. Again, we lost you. The IT integration. So we uh, make sure uh, now this is the last integration that is the under undergo. Yes. Uh, you, yes, you yes, that? actually. Yeah, uh, so I'm so sorry for cutting you, but uh, there's a one another presenter is now in the room. And okay. then we would like to give a little bit of time and we're going to have another Q&A session after panel discussion in the half, half second of, of today's session. So maybe let's uh, keep that one. I'm so sorry, Pauline, for this, but uh, yeah, maybe we can bring that. And I would like to uh, give a floor to Victor. Hello, Victor. Yeah, hi, good, um, good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. Morning. Thank you very much. So maybe uh, you can make a presentation on on your initiative, uh, Givo, which is a new ways of collecting recyclables. I think. Can you share your screen? Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah. Great, I'm seeing it. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Victor. Um, I am um, the founder of a company called Givo, G I V O. Um, garbage in value outs is the full meaning, it's actually an acronym. Um, we started this uh, about Two or three years ago, um, there was a um, we go into this space by from one of the FM large FMCGs trying to understand um, or trying to get an end-to-end -end solution for waste 
management um, in, in Africa. Um, our background is in technology, so we've done a lot of um, digitization of, um, of processes across different industries. And so three years ago, we stumbled into the waste management space. And so um, in this my presentation, I'm going to speak a little bit about what we've done, especially with technology. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk um, about um, the pilot program we did with uh, JICA in Abuja and um, some of the things we're planning on doing in the, in the near future. Okay, so um, um, really, th these are some of the ways Jivo is different uh, compared to some of um, the other recyclers. Um, and so from, like I mentioned, um, we were, were a bit privileged to um, be brought into this space by one of the larger FMCGs. And so from early on, we had a um, very high level understanding of some of the problems that were, were, were being faced. And again, a lot of the speakers spoke about it, so I won't uh, dwell too much on that. Now, uh, first of all, um, uh, on our model, um, we deal with uh, modularity. Modularity is a big part of, 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 of our model. So we, we noticed over time, I mean, again, um, with the research that, that we did, um, um, one of the biggest uh, challenges in waste management is the, um, is the logistics. Logistics cost is quite high. Um, plastic recyclables are quite voluminous and uh, more difficult to transport. So we deal very modularly. And uh, based on that, we've been able to um, also deploy a franchising model onto or layer a franchising model onto that modularity, right? So uh, we have centers uh, where we collect and process materials. The second part is again, the, our use of hardware and software. Uh, so again, um, we do have a background in, in technology. And so this was a bit easier for us. And so we're able to digitize um, all the parts of our value chain. So from, from collection um, at the doors um, or at the community gate or at the, um, at the um, businesses or for the individuals, we're able to um, use our devices to collect information and all the way through to processing in the Jivo centers, identification of materials and so on and so forth. Um, thirdly, again, um, we, we do mobile payments. So again, there's no cash in, in our processes, uh, but we've been able to use that um, as, as, um, as a means for financial inclusion. So um, basically, I mean, uh, um, recyclables are commodities and we're basically digitizing commodities. And so that um, data can basically then be used to de-risk individuals and so provide other things like um, bank accounts, loans, insurances, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, um, it's really about um, recycling. You know, so um, we realized that a lot of, a lot of business, a lot of, a lot of, um, Recycling companies in Africa don't recycle. Um, bailing, for example, is not is not recycling, um, and that's what a lot of the, the things do. Um, in our centers, um, we actually make a new product which you can see. Um, that is um, flakes. Uh, that is um, 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 yeah, plastic flakes in, in this case, and we sell that as a cold wash product because of the quality of material we're able to attract into the center. Um, again, I, I did mention that we work modularly, so we work typically in a two kilometer radius for every center that we operate um, and that. Okay, so this um, goes into some more details of the people centers that we have. Um, and so yes, it's the food container design. Um, right now, this, the, um, um, again, it, it's all solar powered, but right now we're, um, at the power is about 7.5 um, kilowatts per center, um, typically. Um, we um, collect about uh, 90 metric tons a year. Um, again, we're pushing up to 150 metric tons center um, and it's able to create about 10 to 15 jobs. On average, about 13 jobs. Now, again, I did mention uh, uh, we work in a two kilometer radius. So within that two kilometer radius, we're collecting again 100 tons from that community. We're providing um, about $10 cents per kilogram, which is about 200%. Of the average, so again, in that two-kilometer radius, uh, we're providing about ten thousand dollars annually in incentives to enable them um recycle properly and sep um, segregate their materials, and we're also creating jobs within that two-kilometer radius. So about ten to fifteen jobs. Also, um, and, and this is the again, I guess, uh, a, a more important bit for us because of the way we digitize the entire process from collections. Uh, through to processing and the eventual output, we're able to um, measure um, our our um, our impact, our carbon impact on on the environment, right? So um, again, from the way we do our collections, I mentioned again, we work in a two kilometer radius. 
typically we have our um, our collectors that we employ. They walk around to do the collections, or they um, we have electric tricycles that they use to collect the materials. So um, there is no carbon emissions in our collections. Again, we also track that. Um, in the processing, I mentioned that we have a shredder in here uh, that processes um, the material into um, into flakes. Uh, that is also powered by the solar. So again, it's a five um, seven kVA solar system that powers everything we do. So in our processes, there is no carbon emissions, and so every year we um, avoid about two thousand metric tons of carbon. And these are things that we're uh, measuring actively. So from the um, from the um, um, from the electricity generated to the electricity consumed to the um, uh, processing and so on and so forth. Um, this is just a, a, a brief system map to show um, how our model um, looks and operates. Um, I will draw through this briefly, but it starts with advocacy and edu education. Now for us, um, um, in fact, for the name, Garbage In Value Out, um, we're very interested in, um, in um, systemic change Right, I'm really trying to um, educate the customers in that community to see um, recyclables as as a valuable material. You know, hence the name garbage in value out. And so, um, um, a big part of our model revolves around education, advocacy, and incentivizing behavior. Right, because those are three three major things that are necessary to to drive change. Um, now, of course, um, once we educate um, our our staff that go out every day. Um, they um, register the customers um, with the devices that we give them. Um, again, once or twice a week, um, scheduled, they go to the customer's house, they pick up the materials, um, and then they take the materials to the Jibo Center. Now, um, something else that I need to emphasize is, um, I mentioned we advocate, ad advocate, provide incentives. We also provide free pickup services, right? So um, the, it, um, that's providing convenience to the customers. So we go to their houses and we pick it from them once or twice a week, depending on, on the volume and the frequency of their need. Um, and we don't really encourage customers to come to our centers. Now in those, our centers, so I'm on number four, the materials are identified. So we use computer vision to identify the materials. So customer um, brand type, um, SKU, um, um, you know, what is the, what exactly are people um, recycling? And then we sort the materials and shred it. So that's number five. Um, and then um, the rest is really about how we sell the materials through our online portal. And then our customers or the depositors are able to, again, through our app, through our web link, and through USSD, are able to access their incentives um, in real time. So these are some of the impacts we've had since the start of the year. Um, again, 60% of our workforce are women. Uh, we've um, saved over 2,000 tons of, of CO2 um, and we've collected and processed about 200 metric tons since the start of the year in about two active centers, although we've opened a few more since then. Um, so yes, uh, these are some of the things that I spoke about just now. So the Internet of Things. So um, this is about how, how we collect our, our data, again, using hardware, uh, working with the software, but hardware gives you verifiable data, which is why we can authoritatively make some of the claims we are making. The use of computer vision really to um, identify materials and identify waste streams so that you can optimize your processes, which is what we've done. Uh, we use a lot of ad a a hardware, uh, advanced hardware in the collections, but also in the processing, because it could be, um, the shoulders we use are a bit expensive and, and um, a bit more advanced than some of the things in our current market. And of course, um, by paying digitally, we're also able to layer on a lot of fi financial services for the customers. Um, so I would touch on this briefly. Um, we did a project with JICA um, sometime, it started towards the end of last year and it finished in March. Um, it was in a, it was for a community in Abuja called Wuse, um, and this was some of the goals. Now for us, um, um, to, to accomplish those goals, what we tried to do was, of course, did some market research, but also we created a Jibo Center in, in Abuja. Um, and then we also um, created an online portal um, to, enable, um, to enable the um, selling of upcycled goods for Abuja, for Abuja residents and communities. 
Now, in, in, in that, um, I mean, these are some of the outcomes of, of the project. We're able to sign up um, over 300 depositors onto the, onto the system. We, collect, um, we collected and processed over 50 uh, metric tons of material in the, in the three months the, the pilot was actually running. Um, and we reached over 5,000 people from, from this uh, project. But this was in one of the different communities that we're, we're present in. Um, yes, over time, we, again, we, we started this in 2019. We've um, done quite a lot of things, also in the manufacturing sector. Um, but we, the Jibo centers is what we're trying to um, scale up um, across Africa. We're going to have 10 in, um, by the end of the year, and we're trying to do 1,000 of these um, within the next five years. Um, some of our, custom, uh, of our partners, and um, I guess this is the end of my, of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for share, scare, uh, sharing your time as well for this presentation, very informative. And then now really see that the new technologies are really enabling the uh, uh, new ways of recycling in Africa. And then there we, I really can see the leapfrog um, jump uh, from, from Africa for the uh, new ways of uh, doing a business. Thank you so much, Bixa. So uh, we are still having a lot of um Lots of questions. However, uh, we would like to have uh, 10 minutes of our, our break from now and then uh, still continue to the uh, Q&A session. We were planning to have a panel discussion. Uh, however, that, that uh, we are having uh, quite a lot of um, different questions. So we would like to move on to the questions as well. And then last, lastly, I would like to uh, uh, ask some questions in this open panel discussion and it will close the session. So we, let's do, let's go for a 10 minutes break. I hope that everybody can stretch out a little bit and then a uh, coffee break uh, and, and then come back in 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 